Hey guys, Jay here again. Uh, this is video number three in my Lightsabers 101 video series. And for this one, we're gonna try and focus on uh, the internals the for an installed lightsaber and what to expect around um, how that saber is going to be installed, what, what constitutes a good install. And we'll dive in a little bit around some of the capabilities around some sound boards without getting too technical, but really wanna focus on um, some of the internal components, how they go together, and um, what you should be expecting either from a company you buy from or from an installer that you commission to, to get you a lightsaber. Um, I've done a couple videos in the past that have shown what a bad install looks like. Um, and to kind of reiterate a little bit, a bad install is going to be something that doesn't make use of, one, a good chassis or a good chassis type system, to just poor wiring, um, cheap components, uh, skimp, you, you can just start to tell when, when, when you're skimping on things, or, or frankly, just, just the wrong stuff. You know, you paid for something and you got something else. Um, and there's different levels of what we would call bad and poor installs. Um, going back in time, um, before 3D printed chassis or machine Delrin chassis or things were um, you know, commonly used, it was more or less the accepted methodology that you would strap a soundboard on the back of a battery somehow and basically put a speaker at the end and, you know, run your wiring up to your switches and your, and your LED and call it a day. Um, <clears throat> some companies have been using that type of installation even up until fairly recently. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of what that kind of looks like. I've taken the shrink wrap off of here, but this is basically the internals of what something like that looks like. And as you can see, we've got just a loose speaker hanging, and here's our battery and our soundboard sitting up here and our wiring coming off. Now this was, to be fair, this was wrapped in shrink wrap and, you know, was insulated, so none of this was actually going to hit the inside of the hilt. Um, so I wouldn't call this necessarily a bad install, just a poor install, uh, one that could definitely be done better. Uh, functionally, this is going. This was going to work just fine, um, but it wasn't, you know, probably up to the level of standards that we would really accept in the community today for what we would call a good install. Um, a bad install version of this would be just to insert this, frankly, in, into a hilt. Uh, these hilts are these hilts are metal. They conduct electricity, so having a bunch of bare electronics in there is not a good idea. Um, and I've 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 had some installs um, that I've had to fix that have come into me that have, that have been like that. And um, it's just uh, it's just sad when somebody pays money for for something like that. What you should be expecting, and I'm going to use um, and ex excuse the uh, kind of rudimentary look of this because this is just a test bed um, chassis that I use for testing stuff outside of a hilt, um, so it's a little a little bit messy. But um, is something along these lines internally? Is you're going to have some form of a chassis which is going to hold all of your components together. It's gonna to hold all the wiring. And again, even though this is kind of messy down here because I constantly rewire this thing for different test setups, um, you, you can see that the wires are still safely tucked in this channel here. And um, you know, all, the, all our main components are nice and secured in here. And this, something like this is what you should be expecting um, internally in, in a lightsaber. That's gonna keep the components secure. It's gonna keep them from touching the inside of the hilt. Um, and if it's wired properly, um, it's also going to make sure that the, uh, um, you know, none of the wiring is getting stripped or pulled out or maybe rubbing on something. And there's different types of chassis, and it really depends on the type of saber. You can have uh, what I call a floating chassis, which is something like uh, this saber here. This is a, uh, um, a saber that comes from Saber Forge, the hilt. Uh, but this has been installed with a uh, NEC Spark 2 board. Um, this has what I call floating chassis. So this is a chassis that uh, there's basically a wiring harness that goes up in here, which keeps this thing from sliding all the way out. But to get access to the soundboard, I do need to be able to pull this out. So that's why this floats. So the wiring in here is been done to the exact length so that when this gets pushed in, and the pommel gets screwed back on, that wiring harness is going to coil up in here and provide some resistance 
So the chassis actually isn't going to be bouncing around or moving around, but it's also not so long that this chassis is just going to fall out the end. Um, so if you have a saber that's like this, uh, commonly you're going to see um, Saber Forge, uh, Ultra Sabers, um, Vader's Vault Sabers, uh, I think some, a lot of Genesis Custom Sabers, and, and plenty of other ones out there, um, have a design um, like this that is more than likely going to incorporate some type of floating chassis system. And that's perfectly fine and okay, as long as it is wired well. And you want to make sure that whoever is building that for you, wherever you bought it from, has a nice one or more braids. So the wire is actually coiled up along itself, forms a nice strong, um, strong bundle of wire so that if this thing's moving around, you slide it out, it's not just going to rip some wiring right out. Um, and again, <clears throat> Uh, one of the ways to make sure is that is to ask for pictures or to make sure that you're going with a company that uh, isn't afraid to show you pictures of their wiring and if and ask ask an installer i mean if you if you're getting a custom you know you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars sometimes thousands of dollars to get a custom built saber um unless you've worked with that person many times i mean that ask for some pictures of their wiring what's it look like um be wary of anybody who has all kinds of cool pictures of you know lightsabers all lit up and stuff on their on their website or Facebook page, but never shows any examples of the wiring that they do. Um, yeah, that's probably not going to be the focus of their page, but there should be some examples on there. It's not the coolest thing to look at unless you actually are an installer and you like to see other people's wiring, which I do. But um, but you should you should at least see some examples of that on their site because that's going to tell you, hey, this person knows more or less what they're, what they're doing. Um, so that's what you should be expecting. And there's different levels of where chassis can go. I mean, this guy right here, like I said, this is just my test bed that I do outside of a Sabre, but um, you know, this is a seven eighth inch chassis. So this would go into a, um, I believe this was a uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi chassis or maybe a K4, I can't remember exactly which, but um, either way, this uh, would go into a hilt that has a seven eighth inch inner diameter. Um, and hilts have various different sizes. So you have, you know, different sizes of chassis. This one is uh, 1.12 inches um, inner diameter. So uh, this chassis is thicker and bigger. Uh, and you can move on up to more elaborate chassis. Um, things that can incorporate crystal chambers. Uh, they can be made out of metal in some cases. Uh, it really just depends on what the lightsaber is, what its capabilities are, its size, dimensions, what you're putting into it, and frankly, how much you're willing to spend as far as what kind of chassis you can throw in there. Um, <clears throat> chassis can be both big and small. Um, I'll give you an example of one here. So this is a this lightsaber is a uh, Obi Wan Kenobi A New Hope replica from Roman Process and MK1. This is a chassis by uh, Dmitry Stock um, out of out of Moscow. Um, Dmitry and uh, Rick Dorio from Gothry Designs make a lot of really fantastic um, 3D printed uh, chassis designs. There's some other folks out there as well, but these are probably the two most well known. Um, <clears throat> This is an example of uh, one of Dimitri's chassis designs specifically for this. And this lightsaber, um, I just love showing this guy off, so that's why he's in this video. But uh, this also incorporates a custom machined um, crystal chamber up at the top. And this all fits together inside of there. So this is an example of um, getting on sort of that extreme end. This is still plastic uh, printed down here. This is all metal up here. Um, there are you'll see some i've I, I haven't built one of these um it's on my to-do list but um just out of sheer cost um that's the reason why i haven't built one but uh, you can um get all metal chassis um that are really cool looking most of those are for graphlex style savers um and get very expensive you can easily spend close to a thousand dollars just on the parts for the chassis so um <clears throat> not being made of money that's uh, why i haven't built myself one um but you know, even not spending a whole lot of money, you can still get some cool stuff. You know, this is a chassis from Goth 3 Designs. Uh, so it's called a Knight Chassis. Uh, it goes into a uh, Corbanth 2.0 Graflex replica. It's a... Uh, Force is strong in my family. Yeah, you know, this is still plastic, but there's, you know, some 
brass rods and hair metal. It's all been uh, custom painted, so it looks pretty cool. Um, but again, if you if you if you look here, you know you're not seeing a bunch of wires hanging out. Um, it's clean. The install uh, has has been done so that everything is exactly where it should be and how it should be in there and is functional. What you don't want is to have something that you know you've got kind of just wires going everywhere because um, something's going to get snagged and caught at some point on something. Um, you certainly don't want you don't want to see electrical tape everywhere. Um, there is an insulation called heat shrink which comes in a lot of different sizes. That stuff goes around wires um, to provide insulation. You can get different colors. You can get it clear even. Um, so that's fine to use. Um, I'm going to show you an example of electrical tape and uh, heat shrink all done on the same thing. This came. This is not my doing. This is from a uh, from a company. But um, so these resistors here that are going down the LED, they're actually wrapped in heat shrink, which is great. It's good. And up top, electrical tape. So this really should be heat shrink. So a bad install <clears throat> is more than likely going to have a whole lot of electrical tape in there. So if you open up your saber or you see pictures of um, some sabers that somebody's doing and there's a whole bunch of electrical tape and just kind of wires everywhere, you know, red flags should start going off. Uh, I mean, th this thing here, like I said, I, I've rewired this thing, I don't know how many times. There's all kinds of splices in here. This is not the proudest thing for me to be showing off as far as, you know, clean wiring goes. But even as messy as this is, I mean, this is still, you know, re relatively clean install. Um, what, where, where, you, where you can run into some problems, uh, again, is, is, is where you have somebody that is gonna, not going to be forthcoming about the, about the wiring. And I can't stress that enough. I'm just going to keep reiterating that. Look for pictures of wiring, get examples. Um, you know, it's perfectly okay if somebody hasn't built a particular saber before, or they're not 100% familiar with a particular chassis. If they've been, have any experience whatsoever doing this, I mean, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things work the same. Some of the wiring is, is more or less the same. It just boils down to how do you route the wires and stuff. So that's, so it can be okay to say, to ask them, hey, have you ever built one of these before? And they go, you know what, I haven't, but I absolutely could, you know. If you run into that situation, make sure that that person, you know, look at some other examples of other work that they've done and make sure that, you know, they know their way around building building a lightsaber. Um, so having beat that horse to death, uh, I do want to talk just a little bit about the sound boards because these, these are the heart and brains of, um, of your saber. Um, one thing to bear in mind is not every sound board is going to fit in every single saber. Um, Probably the only two that really do are going to be the Nano Biscotti and its little brother, the uh, Pico Crumble, which is just a smidge smaller, uh, but doesn't have the uh, SD card and uh, you know, doesn't, have, doesn't have all the same features on there. Um, obviously, the smaller the soundboard, probably the less capabilities that it has. Not to say it's necessarily a bad lightsaber. I have some of my collection that have Nano Biscottis in them, um, but... Bear in mind that, you know, a crystal focus is, you know, not going to fit in a 7 8 inch lightsaber, at least not without some heavy modifications. Um, so when you are thinking about getting a saber built or buying one, under, you, you need to begin to understand what are some of the size limitations around the hilt, and not just necessarily the thickness, but also the length available as well. Um, some hilts have very, so this one looks pretty long, but in actuality, I've only got about this much room for all the brains, because I've got a bunch of, I got a switch and a recharge port up here, which stick down, so I can't really, you know, run a battery up through there or the soundboard. And then the LED is just sitting right up here, so I've, you know, I've got maybe an inch of room between the um, the switch section and, and the LED. So there's not really room for any components in there. So I've really only got about this four inch section, and it is not that easy to do a really well wired, clean install in that small amount of space, especially when you're talking with a large board. And 
This actually uses a large board. This uses a Spark 2 board, which is just slightly on the smaller side than a Crystal Focus. Um, and this board's actually about that long. So keep that in mind when you're uh, commissioning a saber. Uh, and also when you're thinking about some of the capabilities that you want in that saber. If you want like a really fancy crystal reveal and you know you want the you want a crystal focus and we're going to touch on this real quick. So the, by default most soundboards, I'm going to use some, so here's a Prism, here's a Nano Biscotti, you saw the uh, Spark 2 in here, um, use what are what are called single cell. That means they run off of a single battery, and these guys are rated at 3.7 volts, all right? A Crystal Focus, however, is rated for 7.4 volts, so it is dual cell, meaning by default, unless you hack this thing, which there, you can do, but you, you do lose some capabilities on there, um, which we'll go into later. But by default, this thing requires two batteries in what's called series, so you get uh, 7.4 volts out of it. Now, if you want to have the same runtime capability, you need two of these guys. So obviously, it gives you an idea of how much space that takes up. You can put a shorter dual cell battery that's about this size in there, but it's going to have like a quarter of the actual uh, power available. So you're going to not have the same kind of run time that you might with um, a larger battery pack. So it's also something to think about. Um, that might be okay in a lightsaber that we call a shelf queen. So what, what's a shelf queen? So a shelf queen is really a lightsaber that's just meant to sit on a shelf for display purposes. Maybe pick it up and play around with it a little bit again. So I'm going to, my MK1 here, this is a shelf queen. I would never go dual with this. Um, but, you know, it's an expensive saber, uh, a lot of time invested into it and money as well. Um, this has an 18500 single cell battery in there, um, which is smaller than this. It's about two thirds the size. So it doesn't have quite the same runtime capability. Um, but you can get, um, but there's, there's some folks who like to get uh, Graflex done that have incredibly elaborate uh, crystal chamber chassis and want the full RGB capability of a uh, crystal focus with the, uh, the color extender uh, satellite board in there. And because of the chassis and everything that's going in there, you know, you've got basically a dual, um, um, a, a dual battery that's actually just slightly smaller than this. And, um, you know, you, you can end up with like less than half hour of total runtime on that thing, uh, which again, might be fine for a, uh, for a shelf queen that you're just going to pick up and play with for five or 10 minutes at a time. Um, it's mostly just meant to sit there and look really pretty. But if you're expecting to have something like that and you want to go what we call trooping or go out to a con, um, that's, that's not going to cut it. So that's one of the decisions that, need, that you need to think about when you're um, either purchasing a saber or getting a commission is what are your power requirements? You know, how... Uh, how long do you want this thing to run for? A couple hours, three hours, four hours maybe? I mean, those things are all certainly possible, but they're gonna dictate um, what, what kind of sound boards are gonna work, um, what kind of chassis is gonna work, and frankly, you know, whether or not the hilt that you wanna put it in is gonna be big enough or have the capabilities to, to support that. So all things for you to think about and consider. Um, so there's a lot that goes into building a, a well-built lightsaber. Lots of things to think about. There's uh, people out there that think um, you know, anybody who's, you know, relatively experienced building these should be able to pump out any lightsaber in an hour or two, and that's just not the case. Um, not if it's built well. Yeah, I can build a, you know, again, this guy's pretty basic here, but I, I can build a basic saber, not counting any weathering or anything, you know, in an hour or two, depending on what's in it. That's a basic saber. Um, you know, you want something with a crystal chamber and, you know, high runtime or something, or a fancy soundboard. I mean, the, the time scale just starts going up because there's a lot of thought that needs to go into how it's built, the components that are going into it. And um, frankly, there's, there needs to be a lot of interaction between, um, you know, the person building that for you and um, you being the, the, the end recipient there. So hopefully this, again, like all of my videos, hopefully this has been informative. Um, not sure what the next video is going to be about yet. Uh, I'm still thinking on it. Might wait another day or so to uh, make it. But uh, hopefully these first three have been have been good so far and uh, people are learning things. Thanks, guys. Bye.